All right, let's talk about groups. So I have this composition here, and it's a shot from the short film Noctui Day by Alexandra Mauritz. Uh, we'll look through this window, and I added this glass in front of it. So I uh, tried to keep it as um, you know organized as possible, but you know things can get kind of messy, especially when you're working on more complex compositions and After Effects. So yeah, it would be great to just um, you know group certain layers, and um, yeah, this is what you can do with with Workflower. So first of all, um, let's select the border of the of the window that I built here with some three D layers. You can um, you know, come up with uh, the workflow menu by holding Control Alt X or on Mac it's Control and X. And the menu offers access to all of Workflow's functions. You can close it, by the way, just by clicking on the panel itself. However, now we want to click on Create Group. I want to call this border and hit OK. And now you see um, this group has been created. There are some indent going on, there's some label coloring and all of the layers outside of this group are being labeled to gray. If you want layers outside of groups to, you know, still keep their original color, you can come up uh, with the menu, go to settings and go to um, color label layers outside groups to none by default and uncheck that. In general, I like that because mostly it just work within um, groups. Now let's create the second group. And um, this time I'm just going to use the shortcut to create a group on Windows that is Shift F1, on Mac that is Control and 1. So create the group and call it Main. And just continue on. Another cool thing about Workflow is that you can also create groups within groups. So let me just select those layers here. So there are everything that's, you know, in front of the glass. And those layers here are kind of the reflection. All right. So here we have our beautiful comp. Um, and uh, as you can see, it's already much easier to see the structure. So let's say I want to move those layers in back into the main group. So I can just move them here. And then what I need to do now, uh, because you see like the indent is still the old one and the label coloring is the old one, I need to refresh the layout. So you can come up with the menu and click on refresh layout. Or you can just use the shortcut, which makes much more sense for something you use so often. So if I would move them back inside, then I could just hit shift Z or shift Y for German, shift V for French. Let's say I create another layer here, like a solid, and um, you know it also has the wrong label color and the wrong indent, and then I just hit refresh layout, and you see it now gets the, the right indent and the same label coloring. Within Workflow, um, you can also set the label color. So one thing you could do is just go to the group header and click on you know a different um, color here. And now if I hit refresh layout, then every color within the group will be relabeled. However, it's kind of tedious if you look at that drop down, you know, to kind of imagine the colors all the time. So there's also a different way. If we come up with the menu, you can go to relabel layers and then you get this dialog here and um, you can actually see the colors. And then, you know, I can just select a different color here. And and this is with most functions actually in Workflow. You don't have to have the group header selected. You can be basically anywhere in the group and then um, you know execute the function. And this time I'm just using the shortcut, which would be control shift and space or option and space on Mac. And then you know just set a different color here. Maybe set a different color here. Another cool thing you can do is, you know, expand collapse the group. So if you come up with the menu and you go to expand collapse group, now you have collapsed this group. And you can also collapse the higher group. And I'm just using the shortcut, which is a shift X. And now um, the entire group is collapsed. And if I open it back up again, you see it will remember which 
group was opened and which which group has been closed. And um, yeah, I can also select multiple groups and collapse them or open them. If I don't have anything selected and I execute expand collapse group, it will close everything down. And if I press it again, it will open everything at the highest level at least. Let's say I want to move a group. So I have this border group and I want to move it above the on top group here. So your natural instinct would be probably to just grab that group header here and move it up. But you see, you'll get this error message here, which says that this, this group header has been moved illegally. And um, so then you might think, all right, maybe um, I just have to, you know, just select all layers here and move them up. But you'll get this error message again. And this is because the way workflow works is basically if you um, toggle the shide layers here, if you toggle them on, you see um, that there is this group header here and this group footer. And this is basically how workflow determines where the group starts and where it ends. So you have to have those layers selected as well. But because you generally have the uh, shide layers turned off, um, you don't see them, so you can't select them. So that's why there's this select group function. So if you come up with the menu, you can go to select group. And you get this little icon there while selecting. So you know, okay, this group now is selected. And now if I move that up, you see you don't have any problems with that. You can have that close, for example. You select the group and just hit the shortcut, which is a shift D. And then I put it here. And now it's inside the main group. One thing about the selecting function, which is different from most other functions, like the relabeling or the expand collapse group, with those you can be anywhere in the group, have any layer selected, and now I can collapse the group and it will be collapsed. However, with the selecting, I'll try to execute it now and it doesn't work. You always need the group header selected for this to work. And this is kind of because, let's say, I want to just select this layer and this group. And if I would have it that you can have any layer selected, and I would execute select group now, just because glass is part of main group, it would select the entire main group. So we don't want that. One thing about selecting is, let's say I want to select all my layers. And I would use the general um, function here, select all. This wouldn't work because if you if you look at the, the all the layers that that were shy, for example, After Effects won't select those, and you need them either because there are this header and footer, or they're um, you know like a layer contained in the group. That's why if you have no layer selected, execute select group, and this will just select all the layers. And now I can copy them, create a new comp, and then just paste it. And then if I hit refresh layout, you see that everything now works perfectly here. And the same just goes for just selecting a group. You can always just do that. Just select your group. Then, um, then just copy that. And if I go to a new comp, I can just paste it. And always make sure you're not looking at source name, but on layer name. Uh, because on source name you won't get the indent and all of that. Let's say I add a layer here and um, I refresh the layer, but now I want to rename that layer. Let's say I'm just going to use After Effects renaming tool and say Y thing or whatever. Um, I would always have to hit refresh layout again to um, you know get the right indent. Um, and this can be kind of annoying to always have to hit that. So um, there's also another function called, um, if you come up with the menu, it's called rename layers. And of course, that's also available by shortcut, which makes much more sense. It's just shift return to come up with this renamer. And then I can uh, rename it back to white solid or something. And then you don't have to hit refresh layout again. And it also has some special functions, and I'll get into those special functions later. One thing you can also do with groups is enable or disable them. So with any layer selected um, in the group, 
um, you can come up to the main panel and click enable disable group or just hit the shortcut which is a shift B and now I can enable or disable it. I can also just come up to this icon here from the group header and disable it, hit refresh layout and it will um, disable the entire group and as you can see all of the enable disabled states will be remembered and this is also an active thing so let's say um, I want to grab those three layers here and move them into that group then hit refresh layout you'll see they will be disabled but if I enable the group again it will, all, it will also remember whether they were enabled or disabled and similarly if I move them although they're disabled here I move them back into that group for example they will be enabled as they as they were before. Another thing is soloing. So come up with the main menu, go to a solo group, and now you are just soloing that group. And similarly, you can um, just disable the icon here and you'll solo or unsolo the group. I think this is very flexible, a very cool thing. You're just working with your layers here and you think, oh man, I just want to see, you know, this specific group. Then just hit the shortcut to solo the group, which is Control Alt D or Control D on Mac. Then work on your layers and then unsolo it again. Also, of course, you can lock groups, so come up with the main menu, and if you hold on shift, you get these extra options. Unfortunately, on Mac, no new icons will be revealed for that. However, the functions are still there, of course, so hold on shift and click on lock group. And now the group has been locked, and I can unlock it like this again. Let's say I have these, um, these group layers here, and I want to move them back into the main group. However, they're at the end of the reflection group here, which is at the end of the main group itself. So if I would just move them outside and then hit refresh layout, you see they will be in no group. So how, how can you move them into the main group? So there is this function here called ungroup. And if you execute that, you will always move everything just one level upwards. So if I hit that, you see they are now part of the main group. So they have the same label coloring in the indent of that. And the same goes also for groups. So if I select this reflection group and I want to move it outside of the main group, I can just also use the shortcut, which is on Windows Shift H. And now, as you can see, it's outside of the main group. If I close that down, it's outside. There's also another function called dissolve groups, which, you know, just does as you would expect. So I have this uh, reflection group and I would want to dissolve the entire group and, you know, shift all the layers one level upwards. So if I hold on shift, I can go to dissolve group. And now all of these layers are part of the main group. Also, you can just delete a group. So just come up with the menu and then you have to hold on Alt and you'll get this delete layer clone group uh, function, which can al which also has some extra functions I'll get into in, you know, in later tutorials. Um, so yeah, just delete it and now it is being deleted. With the delete function, you always need the group header selected. It's not enough to just have one layer that is contained in the group being selected. Just deleting the group itself won't work and you'll also get another error. If you then hit refresh layout, you'll just ungroup those layers basically and move them one level upwards. And you can also use the shortcut, which is shift forward delete on Windows or shift delete on Mac. Okay, now I have an immensely beautiful comp here and I can show you how to parent layers with that. You can just um, click on parent layers to group and then hit refresh layout and now all of the layers contained in the group are parented to you know the group header and now I can just move them around very easily and um, let's say I have a new layer here and I hit uh, refresh layout um, this will also get the parent as you can see automatically and you can also do that whole thing with subgroups 
So if I select those here, and um, those are basically my stars. And as you can see, this checkbox here is already grayed out, parent layers to group, because a higher group is already parenting, so it needs to parent its layers. So if we hit create, you see that all of the contained layers are now being parented to the stars group, and the stars group is parented to the shapes group. And I can continue on. All right, and now I can just move all of those individually. as well as as a whole. If I'm just using the shortcut, it is Shift J on Windows. I can just parent all of that and I can unparent it. Let's say, okay, I want to move that, you know, further to the stars. So this is more centered, for example. And then I can come up to shapes again and parent the whole thing. And now um, it's kind of nicely rigged. You can also change the size of this um, box here. So if we come up to the settings and go to the MISC section, you can go to group header size and maybe, you know, do 100 by 100 as, um, you know, a regular null object would be, which I think is often totally annoying that you just have this small thing and you can't really grab the whole thing. I find it incredibly annoying. So that's why uh, there is this option to make it bigger. And I think 400 by 400 is actually quite a nice size to grab. So what are other legal parents, so to speak? So you could um, parent that layer, for example, to that one. And if I hit refresh layout, um, nothing will change because um, it is parented to a layer that is contained in the same group, which is fine. However, let's say I would want to parent that, for example, to the background, which is outside of the, the shapes group. And if I would hit refresh layout, the parent will go back to the stars group. But what if I want to have a layer where I don't want any parent, for example, or I want to have a parent that's outside of the group, then you can use the function set parent exception layer. So if you come up with the main menu and if you hold on shift, you will have this icon here, set parent exception layer. And now it will be set to none and this is fine. I can set this parent wherever I want and uh, it will not cause any problems. And there will always be this X next to it. And I can also just use the shortcut Shift K. You can also very easily duplicate a group. Um, it won't work if you just select those layers, duplicate them and then, you know, move them somewhere because also the additional shite layers won't be duplicated that way. So uh, what you can just do, just select either your group header or layer contained within the group, then come up with the main menu, hold on shift, and then you can click on duplicate group or just use the shortcut for it, of course. And now the group has been duplicated the general layout is this indented mode where, you know, you can be very organized. However, uh, let's say I'm dropping these layers inside here. You might work on two or three layers or something. And then from time to time, you would hit refresh layout and then they will get the indent and the label coloring, which I think is fine, but you will have to hit refresh layout quite a bit. And if you don't want that, there's also another mode available. So if you come up with the main menu and you hold on shift, there's the non-indented layout. So this way, all the layers, they're not indenting. However, especially when you get several layers deep, let's say I'm going even deeper here in terms of what the depth of these groups is. So this is already two times deep. It can be kind of difficult sometimes to see where you are. And if you switch back to indented uh, mode, um, you know, that's much easier to see. When you go to the settings, you can also set your uh, default layout style. Very often when you're working with Workflow, there are special characters like we already saw. Let's say this layer here, for example, is a parent exception layer. And then there are also all kinds of layer types we'll get into later. For example, um, if I merge these mats, you will also get this special character here. Let's say we have a clone layer here. You can also have a group mat, for example. 
and all of these things. And then if you go to the non-indented mode, there will still be these icons. But let's say you want to write an expression here and I want to reference uh, another layer. This here, this stripes clone, for example. So I can't really reference that because it has this special character. So I would have to go here, copy the entire name instead of just typing that. So this is why there is this expression mode. If you hold on control or if you hold on command on Mac, you can toggle the expression mode. And this gets rid of all special characters of all indent. And then you can just very easily reference your layers and there aren't any special characters that you don't even have on your keyboard. And once I'm finished writing my expressions, I can come back here, hold on control or command and toggle the mode back to our indented mode. and. Of course, the expression is now being updated. There are some unusable functions in After Effects. And the first, as you already saw, is um, the shide mode. So you can't really use that anymore. Let's say um, I want to unshy everything and if I hit refresh layout, it will turn back to the shy mode. And let's say I want to shy whatever, those layers here, and if I hit refresh layout, they will be unshied immediately. So if you want to get rid of certain layers, I would recommend, you know, just put them into a group or something and close it and then you don't have to see them anymore. Another thing that's not available anymore are the comments. So if you go to the comment, um, you see that um, Workflow uses that to store certain information about the layers. So let's say I have something else here and I hit a refresh layout, it will switch back to its default values. Just keep that in mind, uh, especially when you have older projects or something where you work with comments and you kind of need them for whatever reason and you um, execute workflow on that, you will lose all of your comments. There's also another limitation and this is specifically on Mac. On Windows, there's the advantage that Workflow can use a certain set of special characters that cannot be found on the keyboard to display its icons. On Mac, however, this isn't possible. So if you go to the user guide, you go to layout and you go to unavailable characters, you see that these certain kind of characters within these brackets, this P for example, so if you want to use a P within brackets, you can't use that anymore because Workflow will remove that from all of your layer names. There are also some additional functions within the relabeling tool. If you come up with a tool, you can quickly change the label color itself just by holding down shift and clicking on the color you want to change. And it will open up this color picker and then you choose a color you rather want to have and you see it will have changed that color. However, you see it hasn't applied it to the layer itself. If you want to change the color and also directly apply it, just hold on control or command and click on the color. And now I just have changed that. And the cool thing, if we look here, you see that a name already has been applied to that as well. If you don't want the name to be applied automatically, you can just come to the settings and go to the misc section and enable when changing a label color, ask for a new color name, and then you can type in your own color name for that. Just be aware if you change the color here and apply it directly, that this will change not only the selected group here, but it will of course change every layer that's associated with this predefined color. If you come up to the relabel panel and you hold on Alt or Option and click on a color, you will be directed to the AE label preferences if you prefer to change the label colors here. There's also another button here, which is called click to not label layers outside groups to none in active comp. So let's add some layers here. And if I refresh the layout, you see that all of those will be labeled to none. And most of the time I would say that's what you want, but let's say you work in a very small precomp. I have a precomp here and let's say I just wanna group those two layers. You see that all the other layers will be labeled to none and with such a small comp, I might not want that. So the cool thing about this button here is that you can quickly just change that for every comp individually. So just hit that and then I can just group those 
and all the layers outside will not be labeled to none, whereas in this comp they would be labeled to none. There are also some additional functions with this renamer. So there are these dividers that you can define. So these, these ones here are basically dividers. And if we come up to the settings, you see that this is the divider and you can also redefine that divider if you want to. And if I execute rename layers, you see that I will only see the last level of that name. And if I hold on Alt or Option and I go left on my keyboard, I can flip through the naming levels backwards. And if I hold on Alt or Option and I go right on my keyboard, I can flip forward. And now I can just rename this specific level here, hit return. I can also add a new name level if I hold on Alt or Option and if I press up. And I can also just remove a name level by holding Alt or Option and pressing down. And then hit OK. And I can always show the full name as well. And if you hold on Alt or Option and press Return, you'll get to the full name. If I press Alt uh, Return, I can go back to the split mode. If I go to the settings, I can also change that preference. I can also always just view it in full mode or remember the last choice I made. So you can also rename your layers based on dependency. So what I often do is I have this base layer and then there are at least two or three other layers that are kind of connected to that. So one thing is, for example, like a fractal structure. Another thing is a mask. This is kind of the way I would name my layers. So let's say I have two more layers and one layer is the fractal and one is a structure, I don't know. Just select the base layer, then I'll select my dependent layers and then I, I also execute rename layers again. Now um, the dependent layers will have the base layer name within their name as well. And I can also re-rename on dependency. So let's say I want to rename that stripe layer. I'm renaming that to not stripes. And then if I hold on Control Alt and hit return or on Mac Command Option and I'll hit return. You see that all of the dependent layers are now being renamed as well. And this goes for every layer that's on top or below that. However, if I move that way up so there are two other layers in between and if I'm renaming that to stripes again and I have hit re-rename on dependency I will just rename you know the ones that are close by. There are also different modes I would just refer to the user guide go to renaming and learn on the additional renaming functions. Something that's also automated here all the time when you have a track mat and you execute rename on dependency, it will rename that to alpha or alpha inverted, whatever the track mat is. So if I uh, set this to alpha mat and I select my two layers, it will always rename that to alpha, which I think is kind of neat because very often um, you're just having some layer here and it's called white solid and whatever and it's your alpha mat and you just have to select your two layers and if you hit rename layers it will just rename it to alpha. If you don't like that function you can also come up to the settings, go to naming and when renaming on dependency rename all track methods according to that type. You can just uncheck that and then it will just rename that to whatever is there. So if I rename on dependency this time it will be renamed to the actual layer name. Another renaming function is rename layers by number. So this is fairly simple. So we have our uh, title animation here and we have these icons on top of there. And now they're just having their file name, but I just want to name it differently. So I can just rename the first layer to icon one. And you know, this is the layer I'll also select first. And after that in order, I'll select all the other layers. And then I come up with the main panel, hold on shift and click on rename layers by number. And now all of the layers are just numbered 